So you're planning a trip to Porto, Portugal, huh? Well, I'm so glad you're here. Hi, it's Gwen with Core Travel, and I've got 15 essential things I think you need to know before you go. So let's go ahead and get you prepared for your Porto trip. Why go to Porto? Porto's rich history stretches back 2,000 years to the Romans, who dubbed the city Portus for port, as it lies on the Douro River, the third largest river in the Iberian Peninsula, and on which Porto's trade and port industry is largely attributed to. Unlike Lisbon, Porto has not been affected by the earthquakes, leaving it, including the UNESCO World Heritage Site of the combined historic city center, Luis I Bridge, and Cerro do Pilar, largely intact. Porto is Portugal's second largest city, but not so second in popularity. Full of history, outdoor opportunities in and surrounding Porto, and incredible cuisine, many tourists flock to Porto yearly. Its welcoming locals, or triperos, are eager to share with you the wonders of their city and what their country offers. You won't be at a loss for things to do and discover in Porto. It is a must-see city for your Portugal itinerary. Number two, the best time to go. As always, the best time to visit depends on time of year and holidays and events, because they do affect the number of tourists and travel costs. Porto's temperatures average from the low 40s to mid 70s Fahrenheit year-round. Peak season months are June through August, with the hottest and most humid months, the lowest accommodation availability, and highest amount of tourists and travel prices, but also the longest days, great for nearby beach and water activities. Low season months are November through February, with the coldest and rainiest months, highest accommodation availability, and lowest amount of tourists and travel costs. To enjoy the best of Porto indoors and outs with good travel deals, the best time to visit is in the shoulder season months of March through May, September, and October. These months hold nice warm weather with some rain, but more accommodation availability, fewer tourists, and decent daylight hours and costs. Always check Porto's year-round festivals and holidays well in advance when planning your Porto itinerary, like planning around its largest street festival, Festas de São João, in June, for accommodation availability and prices. Number three, getting to Porto. The best ways to Porto are by air, train, or bus. The Francisco Sá Canera Airport, known as Porto Airport, serves Porto with direct domestic and international flights from within and outside the European Union. There are multiple transportation options from the Porto Airport to the city center, which I'll review in a minute. Porto receives trains and buses daily, which are convenient, inexpensive, and eco-friendly ways to travel Portugal. Portugal's National Railway, CP, services all of Portugal and connects with Spain's railway, connecting Portugal to the rest of Europe, and the Alpha Pendular high-speed trains connect to Porto as well. Depending on your departure point, trains will arrive at either the Villanova de Gaia Campania or Sao Bento Station in the central Baixa district. The Porto International Bus Station, located at the Campania Bus and Train Station, receives buses daily from outside Portugal, the Algarve, Lisbon, and other Portugal locations, and from there you can connect to metro or local buses. If you must drive to Porto, consult with your hotel or other accommodation on parking availability and cost, or consult the parkometer.com website. The city center roads are narrow, steep, and street parking is limited. Porto parking is divided into zones one through four, and Porto's city hall website shows the zone locations. Zones one through four street parking runs 40 cents to one euro and 20 cents an hour with a two to 10 hour parking limit, and only zones two through three offer daily parking. Using a garage M, parking garage, can cost up to 15 euros a day, and may be easiest. Ultimately though, it's not worth driving into Porto for the time and expense, as things are much accessible on foot or by public transportation, tuk-tuks, or tour operators. To get around Porto, let's start with getting from the Porto Airport to city center transportation options. If you don't have a hotel airport shuttle, the cheapest and easiest way from the airport is by the Porto Metro. The airport station is right outside the airport front door. Buy an E-Train or Purple Line ticket for less than three euros at the Metro ticket stations, buy cash or credit card, and catch the Metro on the upper platform. 
The Metro operates from the Porta Airport every 30 minutes, and the direct Metro arrives at the Trinidad Station in Baeja in approximately 40 minutes. Faster ways, but not by much, to Porto City Center are by vehicle. You can hail a rideshare, like an Uber or Bolt, at the Porto Airport, and rides range from approximately 10 to 20 euros. A shared or private airport shuttle is another option, and costs are about the same. And taxis run approximately 30 euros. You could rent a car at the airport, of course, but then you'd have to deal with gas and parking time and expense, which I do not recommend. Now in the Porto City Center, let's cover getting around the city center. The Porto Metro and bus services are ideal to get around quicker and explore outside the Porto City Center. For example, the Metro can take you from the Trinidad Station in Baeja to the beach coastal city of Matosinhos in 30 minutes. The Porto Metro is extremely easy to use. Tickets can be purchased at each station with cash or credit card, and single rides cost two euros. If you don't have convenient access to a Metro stop, use the Porto STCP local buses or Atoqueros. They also cover a lot of Porto. You pay as you board and single rides cost two euros. Porto also has the hop on hop off bus if you're interested. To reduce transportation costs, you may want to consider getting the Porto card, which I'll cover shortly, or purchase the Andante Tour card. This card is for local metro, buses, streetcars, and elevators, and can be purchased at all metro stations, and it's good for 24 to 72 hours. The card itself costs 60 cents, but reduces one-way trips to 1 euro and 20 cents. Like Lisbon, Porto City proper is large but many must-sees and historical sites are within the city center and accessible on foot. Also like Lisbon, the streets can be steep, so keep this in mind in planning your itinerary and where you want to stay, which I'll also cover shortly. Also keep in mind the wonderful Porto guided historic food or wine walking tours when you plan. They're great ways to meet other travelers while learning about Porto. Renting a bike may be your thing if you have the energy, or rent an e-bike or e-scooter instead to save energy. Alternately, Porto does have bike, e-bike, e-scooter, and Segway tours, which are not only fun and eco-friendly, but also ideal for meeting other travelers of all ages in Porto. And you don't want to deal with the steep hills at all and save time? Well, there's ways around that in Porto, too. Porto does have tuk-tuks, which also offer guided tours. Just opt for an electric tuk-tuk to be eco-friendly. Like Lisbon, the Porto Tram is a unique way of touring Porto. So is the Funicular dos Quindais, which can save you a hike up the steep hill from the Ribera district to the Rua de Batalha in just two minutes and currently costs only two euros and 50 cents. Hours of operation vary depending on day and time of year, so check in advance. Across the river, take a ride on the Telefrico de Gaia cable car for fabulous views of Porto. Rides cover 600 meters over Gaia in five minutes. Single rides for adults currently are seven euros and round trip for 10 euros. Again, check for hours of operation because they do change at time of year. Of course, don't forget a river cruise. Take the Dror River boat cruise for unforgettable scenery and soaking up the sun while resting your feet. Choose from one, two, or four hour cruises or an all day cruise to and from the Douro Valley. For great walking, biking, tuk-tuk, or other tour options, check out my Porto travel guide online or see some of the links I have for you below in the video description to get you started. Okay, let's talk about the Porto card. The Porto card has a lot to offer. It can be purchased online and covers over 150 discounts, including unlimited access to the Porto Metro, city buses, and suburban CP trains, as well as transportation from the Porto Airport, free entry to more than seven museums and attractions, 50% off certain entries like the Torre de Dos Clerijos and a port wine cellar, and special offers in restaurants, shops, other venues, and more. If you're staying in Porto from one to four days, you may want to purchase the Porto card in advance. I have a link to it for you below in the video description. Number six, safety tips. Porto's crime rate is considered low and a safe travel destination. Although Porto does have instances of people selling drugs on the street, even during the day, Porto is still safe. If you're approached like I have been, just decline and keep on walking. I never felt unsafe in Porto as a solo female traveler, including walking around at night. I practiced general precautions and kept my walking routes to well-lit or populated areas. If you normally feel uncomfortable being out solo at night, 
You may wish to visit Porto in peak season when the daylight hours are longest. Ultimately, just be streetwise in Porto and keep your belongings securely on you in crowded or touristy areas with no open bags or pockets and don't carry cash or valuables in your pockets. Number seven, travel essentials. Why not make your port of travel as easy as possible and bring at least the following travel essentials. A VPN service for data security and portable Wi-Fi or get a SIM card in Portugal. A solar charger so your devices are always charging while you walk. Comfortable walking shoes for those steep hills. A water bottle, an eco sunscreen and hat, especially during peak season. And either a small backpack or mono sling bag for keeping your items safe while you're exploring. During off season, you might want to bring an umbrella and bring a light, versatile, or rain jacket and dress in layers. Eight, where to stay in Porto. Where you stay in Porto is important for your itinerary, especially on a short or first time visit. For dining and attractions, the best areas of Porto to stay are Villa Nova de Gaia, referred to as Gaia, which is south of the Douro River, Ribera, the original medieval harbor, considered the heart of the old town. Vitoria, centered around the university. Say, the oldest neighborhood in Porto. And Baixa, the main center of Porto. Baixa, Say, and Ribera are all part of the historic city center. But when factoring in elevation and access to transportation, Baixa and Say are ideal. Additionally, if you're walking distance to the Trinidad Metro and Sao Bento Station, your arrival from the airport is direct to Trinidad Station. You're centrally located to explore many Porto attractions and restaurants on foot and close to the hop-on, hop-off bus stops and tram stops. You can easily catch the metro or bus to other Porto destinations and easily take day trips outside of Porto by train. So mid Baixa to Say are the areas I recommend first-time travelers stay. Baixa and Say have multiple accommodation options across all budget types. As a solo traveler, I look for accommodations centrally located for attractions, transportation, and dining, a reasonable price, amenities, free cancellation, breakfast, high ratings, and a travel sustainable rating. So knowing that, here are some of the hotels I would recommend staying in Porto. Pestana Porta a Brasileira, Eurostars Porto Centro, and One Shot Aliados Goldsmith 12. If you want to go the hostel route for either a private room or dorm style room, try Niceway Porto Hostel, Porto Lounge Hostel and Guest House, or Lost In Porto Hostel. Although not sustainably rated, I stayed at Niceway Porto Hostel on my last day in Porto. It was equipped with everything I needed in a great location, had a friendly and accommodating staff, and they made great suggestions on what to see and do in Porto. I would definitely recommend Niceway Porto Hostel as a budget option in Porto. For more city center hotel and hostel recommendations, see my online portal travel guide. The link is below. Hey, are you liking this video? Well, why not subscribe and stay notified so you know when the next one's coming out. And give it a like. Number nine, top things to do. Like I said, you will not run out of things to do in Porto. I can't cover all of them, but to get you started planning, here are but some of the best things to do in Porto. Some are free, but for those that aren't, consider getting the Porto card. on things to do, see my online Porto travel guide. Of course, Porto would not be complete without sampling the local cuisine and drink. All things seafood, meats, and sausages rule, from sandwiches to soups and stews. A few of the local favorites to try are patiscos of any kind. From bread and olives to meat, veggie, or seafood, these are nice small bites, similar to tapas, to share with a drink. Grilled sardines are also a favorite. Or try the pastais de bacalhau, the Portuguese fried salt cod fritters with potato, onion, and garlic. For Portuguese-style comfort food, try the sandwiches, like the traditional francesinha, a 
loaded ham, steak, and chorizo sandwich baked with melted cheese and a spicy sauce and an egg on top. Or the sandwich de panel, a slow roasted pork sandwich on a doughy roll. And wash them down with a cold super bock lager or stout beer, if you have the room. And for dessert, the must try is the pasta estanada, the famous Portuguese custard tart. Again, these are just a few of the things to try. Don't pass up the sangria or an after dinner ginja liqueur made of sour cherries. It's awesome. And of course, you must try the wine and port. The local wine of the region is the Vino Verde, one of my absolute faves. And port is Porto's signature export. Remember, port is a fortified dessert wine, and some of it's very high in alcohol content. So try it with at least a cheese sampling, or better yet, a meal, but not with dessert. Each neighborhood is known for its own offerings of cafes, markets, outdoor bars, and patios with incredible views, and there's too much to cover. So at a high level, you can't go wrong with the Calles de Ribera and steep streets popular with shopping, restaurants, bars, and nightlife fun. For bites and a large selection of wine, try the wine box on the northern edge of Ribera. It's popular with tourists and locals. Head further north to Rua de Flores, a popular street for more shops, indoor and outdoor restaurants and bars. For a sandwich de pernil and a beer, hit the rooftop at Casa Guedes in the Bojiao neighborhood frequented by locals and tourists alike. And head over to Gaia's scenic riverfront with its own set of shops and restaurants serving fresh seafood dishes and outdoor dining settings. And since this is where the port houses are that have been receiving port grapes from the Douro Valley for centuries, enjoy your port tasting here. I suggest sipping at sunset to view the beautiful light cast on Rivera's colorful buildings. There are many port houses, but you can't go wrong sampling at Calem Cellars, Caves Ferreira, or Porto Cruz on the waterfront. Last, if you're on a budget, try shopping fresh produce and grab-and-go bites at a local market, like the two-story Mercado do Balio, filled with different vendors. For help in finding Porto dining and nightlife, try these apps. Taste Porto, Restaurante do Porto, Francesinha, yes, for finding the best Francesinhas, The Fork, and Zamato. Or if you're like me, you can just wing it and wander the neighborhoods and read the menus or ask for dining recommendations from your hotel concierge or your tour guide or another local to find out where the locals are eating for a more authentic travel experience. Again, don't overlook the Porto food and drink tours and culture tours with tastings to mix it up and get more cuisine variety. Keep in mind tipping in Portugal is not customary, but if you do, it's acceptable to tip 10 to 15%, or you can just round up a euro or two in cash in cafes and restaurants or in high-end cocktail bars. Number 11, day trips. Like Lisbon, Porto is ideally located for multiple day trips for exploring more of Portugal. Top of the list are visiting several other UNESCO World Heritage sites close by, like the Sanctuary of Bom Jesus do Monte in Braga, the historic city center of Guimarães, the oldest university in Portugal in Coimbra, and port tasting in the scenic and historic Douro Valley. Or enjoy some shopping, the beach, and taking a tour in a beautifully painted Mosiero in Aveiro, the Venice of Portugal, less than an hour from Porto. These day trips and more can be done self-guided or, if you prefer, in a tour. Look in the video description below for some suggested tour links I have for you. Number 12, budget tips. If you're traveling Porto on a budget, keep the following in mind. Visit in the shoulder or off-season months. And traveling during the week and avoiding holidays and large events may also save on travel funds. A good deal on a budget hotel in the city center would cost approximately 60 euros a night. And an accommodation a little further away from the city center, like in Bonferm, could lower costs. Just stay close to a metro or bus stop. Depending on time of year, location, and amenities, a portal hostel dorm room can start around 12 euros a night and a private room around 27 euros a night. And Portugal has first and second class train fares. The second class fare is budget friendly, but you need to book early to get a lower ticket price. Take the metro from the airport. Porto card could save money on free museum entries, unlimited public transportation, and other discounts. 
And if you don't want the Porto card, get the Andante card instead for transportation. Museums in Porto are free on the first Sunday of the month from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. And save on dining or drinking out by shopping at a local market or grocery store, or book an accommodation with breakfast included or a room with a refrigerator for storing food. The phone and MEO offer weekly Wi-Fi hotspot service so you can purchase a SIM card to save money. 13. Eco Travel Tips Travel Porto with your eco-friendly foot forward and the plan and in mind using any of these easy travel tips that do make a difference. For flights three hours or less to and from Porto, take the train or bus instead, which could also save you time and money and provide prettier scenery. Look for flights that emit less CO2 through your airline or through Skyscanner's green flights filter. Purchase carbon offsets as well through your airline or third party to lower your flight's carbon footprint. And the less you pack, the lighter the plane, the less fuel it uses. So travel carry on only, which also saves time in the airport. If you need a car service, choose the Uber or Bull Green options, or use Carpool World to support the use of electric cars and carpooling in Porto. Or ditch using automobiles altogether and just walk, or take public transportation, or tram, electric tuk-tuk, Segway, bike, e-bike, or electric scooter. In addition to Booking.com's Travel Sustainable Properties, Green Globe and Green Key Global also have eco-friendly certified options. And on the plane, train, dining, shopping, or on a food tour in Porto, reduce your plastic trash and your carbon footprint by bringing your own reusable collapsible travel bags, water bottle, recycled plastic water bottle carry sling, and bamboo utensils. Trust me, they take up very little space in your carry-on bag. I hope you're still with me because here are some valuable travel tips just for Porto. Museums are normally closed on Mondays and national holidays, so always check in advance before visiting, buying tickets or the Porto card. And smaller, more traditional shops may also be closed on Sundays. The best time to visit any popular attraction during peak season is first thing in the morning to avoid the crowds, so book your tours early as well. Avoid seeing them during the week, and always get your attraction tickets in advance during peak season. Some of Portugal's train first class seats have power sockets, but make sure you know what your seat has before you buy. And both first and second class have access to Wi-Fi, but do not expect it to be reliable. Always carry a little cash in case of an emergency or an establishment doesn't accept credit cards or a ticket machine is not working. The water is safe to drink in Porto. Porto can get a little hot and humid during peak season months. And sections of Porto are steep, so wear comfortable walking shoes. The Porto Airport has free and unlimited Wi-Fi, and Wi-Fi is available throughout Porto and on most buses. Smaller establishments, accommodations, and activity offices may use WhatsApp for booking, communicating, or scheduling changes. And many triperos speak English, but always lead the conversation in Portuguese. If they speak English in return, it is a courtesy. Now that you're familiar with Porto and ready to start booking, would you like a great Porto itinerary suggestion? Three days is an acceptable amount of time to see the best of Porto on a first time trip. So look below for a link to my amazing three day Porto itinerary with fourth day ideas if you have more time. This itinerary takes out all of the guesswork for your first time visit to Porto. Well, that's it. Those are my 15 things to know before you go to Porto. And I really hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful for planning your Porto trip. If so, give this video a thumbs up and subscribe and click to stay notified for when the next ones are coming because there are more coming. If you want more information on Porto and Portugal, don't forget to check out all the links I have for you below, as well as the suggested itinerary, and check out these upcoming videos as well. All right, thanks for joining. I hope you have a wonderful time in Porto, Portugal.